Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> this is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and this is now question number two from the Mechanics M1 October 2021 International A level at Excel paper. There's a particle of um, P of mass 2m is moving on a rough horizontal plane when it collides directly with the particle Q of mass 4m, which is at rest on the plane. The speed of P immediately before the collision is 3u, and the speed of Q immediately after the collision is 2u. Find in terms of u the speed of P immediately after the collision. So let's make a little diagram to kind of um, illustrate the situation. Um, I'm going to put particle P on this side. It really doesn't matter which side you put it on. But this is my particle P of um, mass 2m. I put my particle Q on this side. So we've got particle Q of mass 4m. Um, it says that the particle P is moving um, immediately before the collision. It's moving at 3u. So of course they're going to collide. So P is going to be moving towards Q. So this is going to be this before the collision. It's going. So I'll put on the top here what's happening before the collision. And underneath, I'm going to write down what's happening after the collision. Just to organize everything properly. Um, and before the collision, Q is at rest. So this is, you know, this is going at zero. Okay, this 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 is like the the velocity before the collision. Okay, um, so the speed of this is going, it's, it's moving in this direction, and here it's not moving at all. So you could you could say um, its velocity is three u to the right. And this is zero. After the collision, um, we have to find the speed of p. So we don't know what this is going to be. I'll just put vp. But after the collision, Q is moving at a speed of 2U. And of course, if it's been hit, it's going to move in that direction. So it's going to be 2U in this direction. All right, now, so that's all the information we have about this situation. And what we know also is, um, okay, what I'll do is I'll take this direction as, as positive. Okay, just to make it clear that I'm taking the right as positive in this, in this situation. Okay, but as as you mentioned, it doesn't matter where you draw P and Q. I could have drawn P this way, Q that way. And that's why part B of this question, you have to be very careful about how you answer it. But anyway, we'll get to that when we get to it. So we've got to find in terms of U, the speed of P immediately after the collision. Now, there's two methods we could use for this. The normal method that most people use is say the total momentum before the collision and the total momentum after the collision are going to be the same. So you can say, okay, it's like the mass of the object before the collision times its velocity, which will be 2m, which is the mass of p, times its speed or its, its velocity, which is going to be 3u to the right. We've called it positive, and we've assumed it's to the right in this, in this question. Um, that's of total momentum before the collision, because this is going to be 4m times 0. So the total momentum will be 0, because it's m, the mass times velocity, velocity is 0. And the total momentum after the collision, we've got 2m, mass times vp, which we don't know what the velocity of p is. We have to find that. And here, we know that this, um, of course, if it's been hit from this side, it wasn't moving before. It's going to go towards in the, in the, the direction that the original one was moving in. p was moving, it's going to hit it, it's going to move that same direction there. So this is going to be in the what we've called positive. So we'll put 4m times 2u. And this should give us our answer. That's going to be 6mu plus 0 is equal to 2mvp plus 8mu. All right. So uh, we end up with 6mu minus 8mu equals 2mvp. So that's minus 2mu equals 2mvp. And if we divide everything by 2m, we end up with VP is equal to minus U. So we can say the speed, because it's asking part A says, find the speed of P. The speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So we can say the speed of P is U. Okay, in terms of, we don't know if it's meters per second or anything like that, it doesn't tell us any units. So we just say U. The speed of P is U after the collision. Okay, so we don't put the minus sign because speed does not have a direction. It's a scalar quantity. 
to say velocity, we have to mention, um, you know, we will even mention the minus sign actually. In the end, we'll mention the direction that it's moving in, which is what they want in part B. They're saying state clearly the direction of motion of P immediately after the collision. So in that case, we have to write down that P is moving, or P has changed direction. You could mention P is moving in the opposite because it's now going to go in the opposite direction. We've taken that as positive, and the answer came out as negative. So it's in the opposite di direction, okay, to its original direction. Something like this. To its original direction. You could mention something like that. You could also mention, okay, P has changed direction. Okay, it's moving with its direction changed. Okay, meaning that its initial direction has now been reversed. Its direction reversed, its direction changed, something, something to show that it's now going in the opposite direction to what it was before. What we don't say is it's the, the direction of P is to the left because we don't know whether it was going to the right or to the left before the collision. We just assumed, we just drew a diagram like that. I could have easily drawn P on this side and Q on that side, in which case, you know, according to our diagram, it would then be moving to the right after the collision. So you don't mention right or left, you mention whether it's in the same direction or in the opposite direction to what it was moving before the collision. Okay, there's also an alternative way to do part A using impulse. All right, so what I could say is, um, I know all the information about Q before and after the collision. All right, and I know that the, the impulse received by Q, okay, is the same as the impulse given by Q. So Q gives an impulse in this direction. Okay, or, and it received an impulse in, in this direction. Okay, the impulse that it received is what caused it to change its motion. So it's received an impulse in this direction. So I could say that the impulse is the rate of, is not the rate, the impulse is the change in momentum. So I'm just going to down here um, mention that. So the impulse is the change in momentum, which is mv minus nu, mu, m times v minus u. Okay, that's the general formula. Okay, the mass times the change in velocity. So for, for Q, we can say that the impulse it, repeat, it received okay, um, is going to be the, its mass, which was 4m, 4m, and times its change in velocity. So it's going to be its final velocity, which is minus 2u, because we're taking... No, sorry, it's 2u, because it's going in positive direction. Okay, it's going to be 2u. And its final velocity, its, its initial velocity, which is 0. So its final velocity is 2u, its initial velocity was 0, so its momentum is going to be 8mu. That's the, so that's its, um, its change in momentum. Okay, so the impulse that it received was 8mu, okay, in the positive direction. Now, the impulse that, v, that P received is going to be in the opposite direction. The impulse of, means, you know, the, the thing that caused it to change its, its motion is going to be acting towards the left here. So we can say for, for P, for, for P, we know the impulse is minus 8 mu. And we can say that the impulse is its mass, which is 2 m, times its final velocity, which we have to find, because this is before we found it in the first way minus its initial velocity. Now, the initial velocity of P is 3u, so it's Vp minus 3u, and that's equal to minus 8mu. So this gives us, um, if we divide both sides by 8, 2m, we have v, Vp minus 3u is equal to minus 4u um, divided by 2m, and then we can say Vp is equal to minus 4u plus 3u, so the velocity of P is equal to minus U. Therefore, its speed is equal to U. So that's an alternative way of doing part A. Alternative to part A using the change in momentum, which is the impulse. So we can say the impulse received by Q is 8MU in this direction because its change in momentum is 8MU. And the impulse received by Q is equal and opposite to the impulse received by P. So the impulse received by P is minus 8mu. Okay, so we can say its change in momentum, 
which is its mass times its change in velocity. So it's 2m times the final velocity minus the initial velocity. That's going to give you minus 8mu. And we find, therefore, the speed in that in that method. So there's an alternative method of um, finding the speed okay, after the collision. All right, so <clears throat> that's part two, A and B done. Now we're going to go on to part C. Now part C tells us that following the collision, Q comes to rest after traveling a distance 6u squared over g along the plane. The coefficient of friction between Q and the plane is mu, find the value of mu. So this is the reason they told us um, the fact that the plane was rough in the first place. So we've got to find the value of mu, which is the coefficient of friction between Q and the plane. So basically you've got this particle Q on this rough plane. Its mass is 4m. Now, after the collision, we're going to take its initial velocity Okay, after the collision, it's moving with a velocity of, um, it tells us in the question, to u. Okay, so it's going to u. Let's just assume it's going this direction, which we'll call positive, to u. So I'll write that down here. So this is particle Q. This is mass for m and its speed to, to u velocity in that direction okay now this particle comes to rest after a little while okay um, and the distance it's traveled for it to come to rest okay the distance is 6 u squared over g as they've told us here um, now what are the forces acting on q all right the forces acting on q are its weight, which is going to be 4mg, and the reaction force of it being in touch with the surface, which we're going to call R, and the only force acting on it is going to be friction. And the friction has reached its maximum value because it's moving. So it's going in this direction, but obviously acceleration is negative because the only force acting on it is the force of friction, which is F max. And we know that F max is equal to mu times r. And we can see if we resolve the forces um, vertically that r is equal to 4mg. It's only, only forces acting on it. So it's just r, the only weight, the only, in the vertical direction, the only force we're acting on it is its weight. So the reaction force would be 4mg. So we can say that f max is equal to 4 um, mg times mu. Okay, mu times 4 mg, 4 mg times mu. That's the that's the friction force acting in this direction. Okay, so if we resolve forces horizontally in the direction that it's moving in that we've assumed is to the right here, we call that the positive direction, we can say that the force acting on it is negative because it's obviously in the opposite direction. So you have minus 4 mg mu is equal to mass times acceleration now its mass is 4m and its acceleration now that's the key now we need to find the acceleration if we find the acceleration we can find what mu is we have to just put a there and we can find what mu is in fact we can even get rid of some of these things right now we can say that the m's cancel out the fours cancel out we're left with mu is equal to minus a over g minus a over g so if we can find what the acceleration of this particle is, we can we can replace the A with that, and we've got mu. How do you find the acceleration? Well, we can use SUVAT, because we know this is constant acceleration. It's moving out. We know the distance it's traveled before it came to rest, 6u squared over g. We know its initial speed, which is initial velocity, which is 2u, positive direction, we call positive. Its final velocity is 0, because it came to rest. And the acceleration is what we have to find. And the time, I don't think we even need it. So we can see we could use one of the equations we could use would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And that would help us find what a is. We know v is 0. We know u is 2u, so that's going to be 4u squared plus 2 times a, which we have to find, times s, which is 6u squared over g. 
So let's rearrange this equation. We're going to have negative 4u squared equals um, 12u um, squared a over g. All right, 12u squared a over g. Yeah, negative 4u squared equals um, 2as, and s was 6u squared over g. Okay, so now we'll end up with um, a, so the u squares cancel out. If you divide by u squared, you'll have minus 4g over 12 equals a. So a is going to be minus 1 over 3g. So now, we, we worked out here that mu is minus a over g. So we can replace the a with minus 1 third. So you have um, minus minus one third g over g which gives you basically one third the g's cancel out minus and minus gives a plus so we can say mu is equal to one over three that's the answer for this question okay that's the that's the coefficient of friction between the plane and q okay so there we have the answer to question two part c answer is one third all right, so this is kind of like a question to do with friction and dynamics as well, equations of motion, kind of a lot of different things in this question. You've got part A and B to do with momentum and impulse, part C to do with uh, suvat and um, friction. So it's quite a lot of things in this question, a lot of different topics. Okay, so there's question number two. Um, I hope that was clear. We have um, other questions from this paper should be in the playlist that should appear in this area somewhere over here once um, the video is done. Also, you'll have another playlist in this area which will give you questions. And I guess I'll put questions to do with momentum and also to do with SUVAT. And also, so I'll have maybe my momentum impulse playlist here in my in a kinematics playlist over here to do with equations of motion. And I'll put another uh, playlist with questions to do with friction and then you can subscribe to my channel also for one of the links here thank you for watching and see you soon